white people dancing. It's like we're at a wedding. You can see that this is a charity dance for a thousand dollars. Shut up, you can't! I will do the old box step. In other words, I'm going to hide in a box. That's the box step. Where do you think you're going? You're not liable for anything. <laughs> you figured out my plan. I feel a little left out. You have tequila. You have Riesling. Yes. The table in front of me is bare. Sucks to be you, doesn't it? <laughs> Did you borrow Alkali's coat? <laughs> His hat. That. Well, I reached in my pants pocket and I pulled out the beer. Dude, if those are light beer, you're retaining a lot of water. <laughs> Sir, I will, have, I will have you know this is Montucky Cold Snack, the unofficial beer of Montana. <laughs> what do you have to do to become the unofficial beer of Montana? <laughs> and if you say cold smack someone, I'm going to hit you with a beer. So I've never had this before. It was literally the cheapest beer at Walmart. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, dude, dude. Ball? No. Oh, don't be a jerk. It says on the can, don't be a jerk. Well, do you believe everything you read? No. There you go. Welcome to Monkey... Nope. Welcome to I Comedy Better When I Had a Few. So see, close. see, it's hard. It's hard to remember so what close. panel you're on. Thank you guys for being here. No. A duke, duke, duke. AV, I will get you for this. <laughs> that man controls the badges at Anthrocon, and I don't know what I'm going to be okay, handed this I year. Forget. What was it? Was it Booza Duke Duke Duke? Uh, what's it the was, name? It's Alkali. You <laughs> know this. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Booza Duke Duke Duke. Okay. I'm Booza sending the email to registration Duke. right now. <laughs> Oh, this is good. There is no way this is good. You said no, this is full no, no, that's good. No, it's good. No, it's the cheapest thing at Walmart. It can't be good. It's no, good. that's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So now I'm more confused. Why is it the unofficial beer? Well, it's the official unofficial beer. Okay, now you're just being confusing on purpose. No, it's right there on the can. The official unofficial beer of Montana. It even tells me not to be a jerk. Fair enough. The fact that your beer has to tell you not to be a jerk in Montana is... All right, 
this is get this is even more beer. Where do you think this beer is from? You said Montana. No, no, it's the official, unofficial beer of Montana, Montucky beer, made in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Wait, what? <laughs> well done, Wisconsin. Take over those other states one libation at a time. That's amazing. Excuse me, does Booza Duke Duke have hyphens in it, or is it all one word? I, well, seeing as it's barely fitting on the badge as is, no hyphens. Okay. It's uh, Booza Duke, one word, yep. space Duke, space Duke. Okay, so middle name, Duke. This yes. is not how my it's badge it. is meant, God! And it's uh, Duke, D-O-O-K. Yes. Yeah. I know, I can spell Duke. I've got an idea. Okay, I just want to make sure. Booza Duke, 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 gotcha, okay. And All right, it's done. Does your idea involve starting a new con and making their badge? Because that's my next plan. No, Good no, luck, I, old I just guy. i to rename my After Dark Twitter. What's your after dark Twitter now? Boozy dick dick dick. God damn it! <laughs> I'm sending that in for your badge name. Now. <laughs> you know what? I'll take it. Is what I hope people will say when they see that badge name. Okay. <laughs> I'm so lonely. What do you mean, excitable man? <laughs> I did not what call you. Hell? I did not call you an excitable man. What'd you say? Excitable boy. Small excitable boy. <laughs> Also, I'm going to remind you that I know your director of registration, and they owe me a favor. So what do we think? Oldie Prawn? Should that be their badge name? Because I'm going with that right now. Gee, director of registration, what floor do you want your room to be on? <laughs> room 420. That's my room? Don't you dare take that from me. It's actually the worst idea. A lot of conventions, a lot of conventions. Who's that? Do, do, the, do, do. God damn. A lot of conventions do that as a joke. I'll show up. They're like, okay, your room's ready. You're in 420. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. I have a massive amount of like, substance on me. Maybe don't put me in that room. They're going to search it first. <laughs> but I love, did anybody here go to MCFC? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And everybody enjoyed uh, the two people. Like, I love that. Did everybody go to MGFC? Two viewers. I'm like, did everybody enjoy? And no, motherfucker, we didn't go to it. We can't afford more than one kind of year. This is the one. No fucking pressure. Uh, <laughs> So, if you're not aware, at MCFC at opening ceremonies, somebody emailed a bomb threat to the convention. Everybody had to go outside for four solid hours while the police swept the hotel. Right? When the police bomb sweep an area, they don't just sweep the public areas. They sweep the private areas, too. Last count, the police walked in on four different people fucking... <laughs> And said, you need to get out. And they said, no. And the officer said, it's going to blow. And the guy said, not before me. Um, I wish he was making this up, by the way. Well, I, still, I talked to one of them. They said, because uh, they did have to go room to room. And they did have to look in drawers. And one of them was standing there with his friends. And he had a look on his face like, I don't know how they fit all those in the drawer, but... It was like one of those fake cans of peanuts and just dildos popped out because somehow they were pressurized in this gentleman's room. All right, new business idea, pressurized dildos. <laughs> what do you mean, new business idea? Have you not seen Bad Dragon? <laughs> I'll be willing to bet that the local police actually concocted that whole bomb threat thing so they could explore the rooms. Well, I really don't like that because the entire conversation I had outside with my good friend, we're going to call him the law. Boozy dick dick dick. Boozy Please. dick dick dick. Use we my had to name. stand outside and we are calculating exactly how much I bought, how much I brought, and how illegal that is in that state. Basically, they stood outside the whole time like, you're going to walk in there and get arrested. Have fun, Alkali. I'm sitting there going, you know, when they, uh, when they need to look for something like a bomb, they can look anywhere a bomb may be, such as your room, your drawers, your luggage. <clears throat> and he goes, what? I go, oh, yeah. And anything they find is admissible in court. What? Oh, yeah. I'm going to jail, more than likely, yes. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I, I really appreciate the support. You could have said something to calm my fears. Instead, you're like, oh, you're definitely going to jail. 
Want to go to Buffalo Wild Wings? We did. Yeah, I know. But it was yeah, like, last night. Like that's exactly what I fucking did. <laughs> Yeah, let's okay. go to Buffalo Wild Wings. You guys went to Buffalo Wild Wings because when you got to the street, you looked this way. I looked the other way. I saw Tim Hortons, and I was with a Canadian, and it was like all of a sudden this gravity field just opened up and just dragged us in there. <laughs> what I loved was we got back inside, we immediately went into a panel. Like the second we got back in, there was a panel scheduled and we were getting on stage. And somebody goes, oh, what panel is this? And I go, you are not going to fucking believe this, but it's Con War Stories. <laughs> Very first panel. <laughs> and somebody said, in Kage out there, I'm like, look, I turned around outside and I saw a white lab coat going over a hill in the distance. We may have lost Kage. <laughs> Okay, I Miss also, getting has him now. I also had something of an excuse to to avoid that panel because not only was there a Tim Hortons, but there was a sushi restaurant which somebody said served sake. What fucked up world do you live in where you're like, you know what I need? A double double and some sashimi. <laughs> okay, all right, show of hands. Anybody else think that that is perfectly normal? Yeah, but we're fat. You skinny little shit. No, no. Thank you. You know what? Fuck that, Tim Hort. On Saturday at MCFC, I went, I'm going to go down to the hotel restaurant and I'm going to get chicken fingers. They say they're serving lunch in the lobby restaurant at 11. They were not serving lunch at 11. There was no lunch anywhere. <laughs> Excuse me. Is that yeah. Listen, I'm halfway through hour. I'm pretty much done with the first can. Me burping's just a thing that's happening for the rest of the Let's day. Let's keep it at burping, can we please? I'm sitting next to you. So I go, it's okay. I'll get in my truck. I will go somewhere. I will eat. I got in my truck. I drove across the street. There was a McDonald's and a Tim Hortons. I walked in the McDonald's. The lady behind the counter looked up over the sea of fox ears <laughs> and yelled, it's gonna be an hour and a half for a Big Mac, and I walked the fuck out. <laughs> I went to the Tim Hortons, thinking, Tim Hortons has three things on their menu. Coffee, donut, sandwich. Fucking it. If you've ever been to a Tim Hortons, look at the menu. That's all they have. It's not a huge amount of choices. I'm thinking, that will be faster. I fucking hate furries. <laughs> Okay, okay, I need and, to... and I don't hate you because you're furries. I hate you because you're indecisive fucks. I, I walked in. This kid walks in before me with like seven of their fucking friends. They're lined up at the counter. The kid walks up to the counter. The guy behind the counter goes, what do you want? And the kid, for seven solid minutes, oh. goes, uh... <laughs> now, you don't know this about me, but when I'm sober and hungry, I'm not nice. <laughs> So I'm sitting at the back of a line of furries. This guy and his friends, as they stare at the menu, this guy going, uh, and that's when I yell out, there are three fucking things on this menu. Sandwich, donut, coffee, pick one. Uh, fuck it, you're getting all three. A but I wasn't, gonna, I wasn't gonna leave, because I thought, surely, surely, this is just somebody who is indecisive or, or has never been to a Tim Hortons before and they're trying to make up their mind, but surely the rest of his friends will not be like that. And then I looked at his friends and I went, oh, this is going to be a long fucking day. <laughs> so I left, I went, you know what? I'm gonna go back to the hotel. I've got some chips in the room. Now I have to be on stage in three hours at this point. I go, there's some chips in my room at the hotel. I'm going to go back to my room. I'm going to eat some chips. I will calm the fuck down. I will stop imagining ways to kill the kid from Tim Hortons if I see him at the con. <laughs> oh, my God. I go back to the hotel. Now, <clears throat> the MCFC hotel is, is nice. It, their new hotel is very nice. It has limited parking. Um, limited unless, Okay. They have ample parking, but you drive a fucking yacht. Oh, oh no. Because <laughs> you see, they had overflow parking, but the overflow parking was in front of the clubhouse that was under construction. And they had overflow hotels with their own parking that was a block away. And as I circled the parking lot for two solid fucking hours, 
I yelled to the heavens, what dipshit thought furries would walk two blocks? <laughs> some of them did, though. You know how I know some of them did? Because the overflow was across a four-lane highway. <laughs> And I am at that four-lane highway, and I am watching fursuiters cross the street. And the light in front of me turns green right as a deer fursuiter is walking across the street. And stops directly in front of the big-ass truck I now drive. Turns, I swear to God, looks me dead in the eyes, and starts doing this. <laughs> and I am going, no one will convict me. Especially I, in Michigan. All I, had, all I had to do is say, officer, I wasn't wearing my glasses. I just thought it was a deer in the road. By the way, what situational awareness do you have to lack to be a deer fursuiter and say, I've got to go play in the street? <laughs> I get back to the hotel. I'm circling a lot. I'm cursing. There are no spaces. No fucking spaces. I pass one guy right at the front. Prime space. Right at the front. Guy gets in. The rear lights of his car come in. I stop. I'm waiting. The lights stay on. I look out. The guy's on his fucking phone. <laughs> I have an eight. I consider vehicular homicide. I hate the twink from Tim Hortons. <laughs> And I've been driving in circles around a hotel parking lot outside of Detroit. Not even Detroit. Ypsilanti, Michigan. The, 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 the fucking what? The Paris of Detroit? What the Paris fuck was that? Of Detroit. Anyways, I, I'm mad, but I go, fuck it. I zoom off around the lot. I circle a lot. Now there's other cars circling the lot this entire time, right? I circle a lot. So I get back up there. And as I'm pulling up, three, four cars go past that guy. And that guy's doing this. And he sees me. He taps his brake lights. And I go, wait a second. Did he watch me circle the lot and decide he's going to wait for me to come back around so I could take that space? Exactly what he did. Aww. He backed out. He waved at me. He drove off. He was waiting for me to come back around to get the space. And I turned to wave to him to say thank you. And there was that fucking deer head in the back of his car. <laughs> FC was fun, and it actually really uh, warmed my heart to watch as we all had to leave the building. As a group, we were all outside, on a golf course, not shitting into sand traps. I need to make sure everyone is clear on this. No one actually shit in the sand trap. Less than 1% of the people shat in the sand no trap. No one shit in the sand trap! Everyone found a way to entertain themselves, whether it was going to Tim Hortons and taking too long to order, having the most gastronomical, insane dinner ever, going to Tim Hortons and then uh, sushi afterwards. And but, sake. And sake. But a small group. It started with two people. It started gathering all the pine cones. Oh, God. Oh. All the pine cones. And they built a pile. And as that pile started to grow, so did the group of people around it. And they started putting other things on the pile. So by the time we got there, there was a pile as big as half of one of these tables of pine cones, fursuit heads, fursuit accoutrements, and of course, cash. And Just, bad dragon. And of course there was a bad dragon, yes. that's a given. <laughs> but they are, they're entertaining themselves, they're having a good time, I'm standing there, I'm watching as they form a cult. They're chanting now. Pine Shrine! Pine Shrine! Pine Shrine! And a Dorsai. A Dorsai I've known for a very long time walks up to me and says, Alkali, um, should we be worried about this? My, no, man, they're just blowing off some steam. I think it's all okay. And the moment I said that, in unison, all of them started chanting, Sacrifice! Sacrifice! <laughs> Sacrifice! The Dorsai looked at them. This one saw what I just did, grabbed me and pulled me in the other direction so when the Dorsai looked back, I was gone. I disappeared into fat air and he was so confused. I just want to point out, this is how Scientology got started. 
like, uh, honest to God, the way this started, because I was there, I saw it start. Like, it was three people just gathering up pine cones. They start saying, Pine Shrine, Pine Shrine. It was three people. One person walked over and said, we're starting a religion. I'm like, oh, that's neat. And then I turned around to get some coffee from the cart that the hotel brought out for us. Turned back around, and there were 50 goddamn furries <laughs> in a circle chanting Pine Shrine as the pile grew higher. Excuse you me. You are the most impressible, impressionable motherfuckers I have ever met in Excuse my life. Excuse me. Yes, Uncle Kaga. You have no right to speak, Mr. High Priest of Torco. What? Yeah, no, like, this actually proves my point, okay? One year, I put a screaming camera on my Thanksgiving turkey while it was in the oven. I woke up the next morning. People had written hymns. <laughs> They were praising Torco. This is like Pine Shrine? Didn't really faze me because I've watched you all form so many cults over the past few years. God damn it. No! Yes! Yes! yes. So he has a tribute oh, as a oh, apology. Enjoy booze a duke dick dick and booze a duke duke duke. Oh my god, that's just whiskey with ice. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I wanna live! I have a pension now! I don't, bottoms up! Isn't that just called on the rocks? Isn't that how you drink it? Yes. I mean, yes. Usually the rock is large and takes up more of the cup. This is just a much better pour. Thank you, A.V. It was a lot more ice. I've been standing back here waiting for the perfect time, so it's a little watered down now. <laughs> Enjoy your cold, watery whiskey, motherfucker. I am. If you want more, I have more. The entire bottle is... No, never mind. I'm not going to tell you where it is, actually, because I want some of this myself. It won't matter. Have we missed the large number of Montuck Montucky cold snacks in front of me? No, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. They can hide it wherever they want. Kage, what? explain to them why you can't hide booze from me. I'm going to tell you a story. This, this is coming with me. Fine <laughs> gentlemen visited my home in North Carolina for the first time. He had never been to my home before. I greeted him. Hi, oh, Alkali, so good to see you. We embraced. I said, take off your shoes, stay a while. Let me take your, your, your suitcase. I took his suitcase. He walked into my kitchen, went to the cupboard where I keep my Tupperware and where my friend Chittabengo, who visits me on occasion, keeps his bottle of scotch. Alkali walked in, zeroed in by scent like a bloodhound, opened it up, and just started drinking Chittabengo's scotch. I didn't tell him it was there. Nobody told him it was there. He'd never been to this place before in all his born days. Incidentally, uh, Chinabingo is still waiting for his scotch to be replaced, I'm just saying. Oh, I'm very aware that they're uh, waiting for their scotch to be replaced, because I saw them at the convention. You know what they gave me? A bottle of scotch. So, you know, I'm waiting. I'm saving that for a rainy day. <laughs> they're a sweetheart. Chinabingo really also is one of the people who is uh, perpetuating a... Uh-oh. I don't know if I should drink this anymore, but it's booze, so I'm going to. <laughs> when I first moved to North Carolina... It's oh, 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 oh. only water! Sorry. Uh, it looks like water from Flint. Ah! <laughs> Does that talk about religious cults? Uh, oh. Brother Justice. American Single Malt Whiskey. Um, I'm sorry, is it called Brother Justice? Yes. It's the only drink you oh, fill up in your oh, cup right to the thin me. blue line. No, no, it's Brother uh, Just Us. Yeah, it means it's for just us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's definitely for just us because one time on Anthrocon main stage, drinking out of almost the exact kind of glasses 
I had found them backstage. I got everyone on the stage a water, a water with a little bit of ice, clear liquid ice cup. I had the same cup, but mine was tequila. And to this day, I will tell everyone that this was one of the very few times it was not planned. Because this gentleman over here reached down between our chairs, picked up that cool glass of refreshing water, and did a spit take during the charity show at Anthrocon onto my sleeve. You deserved it, you bastard. <laughs> you drank my drink! It was oh God. close to me. What the hell is that? Oh, God. No, hate man. sandwich. Yes, it is a hate sandwich. <laughs> Quick, somebody get a picture of Al Glenn with Chick-fil-A for Twitter. <laughs> this is how you get out, right. motherfucker. This is, this is real. This is real. So my buddy, right when I came here, they know that I get very busy at these things. Like, Al Glenn, Al Glenn, Al Glenn. Here's a sandwich and handed me a Chick-fil-A sandwich. I was under the hat. You can't see it. I already hit it. <laughs> handed me a Chick-fil-A sandwich. <laughs> we go outside and my mate immediately... <laughs> Takes the sandwich, takes it out, crumples up the wrapper, and throws it away. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's a real... And we start talking about it, and as we're doing that, I have to tell my mate to shut up. Because behind their back, a woman has just gotten out of her car, walks over to the door, stops, wide eyes, goes into her backpack, takes out the Chick-fil-A, takes the sandwich out of the bag, throws away the bag, and goes inside. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, we're helping, we're helping. Have you, have you ever heard of the Sabbath Goy? I'm sorry, the what? The Sabbath Goy. No. Hold on, are you talking about the gentleman that does no. the work for, yeah. for, for Orthodox? Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. On the Sabbath. Sorry, the, the Shabbat do, Goy. Yeah, it's Shabbat Goy. Can't do anything that uh, is work, that, that causes work. Uh, this is a real thing. So they have what's called the Shabbat Goy. Uh, and Goy is just Gentile. That's a non Jewish person. That's all it is. Uh, but they hire a Shabbat Goy, a neighbor, Gentile neighbor, to come over and do things like turn on the lights, start the oven, things like that for them. So I've always said what we need is the Chick-fil-A Goy. <laughs> Just your buddy who buys one too many Chick-fil-A sandwiches and gives you one so you don't have to have the guilt anymore. <laughs> oh my God. Well, Chick-fil-A, uh, Zan's parents, the last time we went and visited them, Zan had to explain to them, no, we will not be having Chick-fil-A for dinner. We don't know if you're just ignorant of this fact or assholes, but either way, no, we're not yeah, having that no, for dinner. No, that's, like, if you give me the choice, no. If you get right. <laughs> if it's already there. <laughs> I, I want to point out there is no Chick-fil-A in the Chick-fil-A bag. I saw what it was. It's not a Chick-fil-A oh, sandwich. Well, it's a bad dragon thing. It's, it's a turkey sandwich. You have a turkey sandwich. Torco! Somebody, it is a turkey sandwich! Somebody, somebody, I love you guys! Somebody was just fucking with you by giving it to you in a Chick-fil-A <laughs> That's bag. even better. You guys rock. Uh, okay, AD. wait a minute. Where did they get the... Did they pull that out of the trash? God, I hope so. Wouldn't that be great if you had to go to the hospital for a joke? I trust my AV department. AV, where'd you get the bag from? Some random person on the side of the wall there. <laughs> bon appétit, Alkali. <laughs> Don't act hesitant, mother. I've watched people walk up, hand you a nondescript pink lang li sure liquid it's fine. in an unlabeled bottle and say, drink this, and you go, okay. <laughs> I mean, I just did that with two glasses of booze. They didn't even question it, they just took it. Yeah, well, we just kind of assume you want us alive. <laughs> Burn out. Burn out what? <laughs> We're in fear of the shit you're going to give us when someday you pay us back. I'm in fear of the shit he's going to give us when he eats that sandwich. <laughs> Fair enough. That's, that's why we're back here and you're up there. You're still downwind. We're very talented. A.B., could you tell me, was this panel one hour or one and a half hours? We'll check and let you know. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm going to tell my sake story, Hell God damn yeah. it. <laughs> when I moved to North Carolina, a bunch of the local furries said, Ooh, Uncle Kage's in North Carolina. Ooh, yay, yay. Uncle Kage, there is a sake bar near where you live. I said, Ooh, ooh, yes, sake bar. Please take me to this place. And they did. 
And, and we went and we sat down and I was, oh, oh boy, a sake bar. I love sake. Yes, yes, yes. And, and the, the, the wait person came by and I said, excuse me, good wait person, sir. Uh, what type of sake do you have? And I swear on my mother's grave, this guy said, we had both kinds, hot and cold. Oh. And I said, oh. ah. And I looked at the other guys and they sort of... <clears throat> Shuffled in their seats, and I said, "I no, no, um, I, I, I was. What I'd like to know is what, what, what label, what brewery, what type of rice is it made from? What prefecture does it come from? What is the 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 same my boy, the grinding ratio?" And he looked at me blankly, and said, "Let me bring you a menu." I said, "Yes, please do." And I looked at the fella, and they 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 started. <clears throat> And I was chatting with them. The, the, the wait guy brought a menu and it's like, shit, 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 tolerable. <sighs> All right, bring me a glass of this, your tolerable sake, please. And, and he went off and I was talking with the guys just like we are here and they're talking to me and I'm talking back and forth. And, and from the corner of my eye, yeah. I, saw, I saw a glass come in oh, no. and I saw a bottle I turned, I said, stop. Because sticking out of the glass was a cucumber. Oh, God. And I looked at it, I said, excuse me, what is this? And the wake guy said, it's a cucumber. They knew you wanted a little tickle on your pickle. So I said, okay, I, I'm glad that we agree. It's, we, we are both seeing the same thing. May I ask, what the hell is it doing in my glass? <laughs> And he looked very confused. Backstroke. <laughs> oh, he said, didn't you want it? And I said, okay. Work with me here. We're going to take a little journey of the imagination. Imagine, imagine that, that we're in New York City. We're on 42nd Street. We are going to go to Del Giorno's, the finest steakhouse in New York City. And I go in, I take off my opera cloak, and I hand it to the maitre d'. Ah, good evening, Francois. So good to see you again. Yes, I would like my, my normal table. Thank you very kindly. Um, I think I'll start tonight with a, a saint Amelion 2003. And could you put a dead trout in it for me, please? <laughs> Maybe filter it through an old jock strap before I... No, I don't want a fucking cucumber! Can I say that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is 18 plus. Right? Um, right? Yes. yes. Yay! Yes. So, um, now the thing is, I don't know if I ever showed you guys this picture. Um, several weeks later, we were at a proper Japanese restaurant, and Chitabengo was there. And as I was being served my sake, he just came out and put a cucumber down in front of me. And I looked at it, and I smiled, and I drank my sake. And after a little while, Chitabengo got up to go to the men's room. And I picked up the cucumber and I said to the company, I'll be right back. <laughs> there are pictures I can of show you. Of what? Of what happened with the cucumber. Yeah, that's my fear. Uh, shall I show you? I don't know. This is only 18 plus, not 21 plus. <laughs> okay, if this were a charity panel, I'd show them the pictures. Which reminds us, ladies, gentlemen, both and neither, this is I Comedy Better When I've Had a Few, and we will say the same thing we always do. This weekend, we are here to support Hawes, the Humane Society of Wisconsin. They are out there in the hallway right now doing a wonderful job. They have been part of this convention for not... I, actually, I think they've been part of this since year two, so I'm going to say eight years that they have been with Archon. If you can, give, give. And if you can't... Oh, wait, this is a charity panel? Yes! Let me go talk to uh, the AV guys. <laughs> and if you can't give, don't worry about it. We're furries. Those animals are going to be just fine. I'm going to throw the hat out in the audience. You ready, my dear? Wee! Nice catch. You know, it's weird. I love Sam talking about going to a uh, sake bar because we have a Cooper's Hawk near us. If you don't know what Cooper's Hawk is, Cooper's Hawk is a chain. It's a fancy restaurant that's not that fancy. But exactly. what they do have, it's a very fancy restaurant that's not that oh, fancy. Gosh. Yeah, no, not at all. I really like it. Uh, we actually got a membership with Fur Square to take out uh, the uh, stuff crew, the people that come and unload the truck. So Cooper's Hawk got to know me a little bit. 
And when me and Zan walked in, holding our membership high to do a wine tasting, they recognized me. And they had me move to the far end of the bar. And I thought it was because that end of the bar was in the shadows, and that makes sense to me. You don't want to see this drinking with you. It's going to scare children. But what they were really doing was putting us over towards the dead bottle area because they were only allowed to pour eight drinks at this bar. But if a bottle with half a drink left in it is sitting over there, well, that can't go to waste. We got so wasted at the Cooper's Hawk wine tasting that my inner Uncle Kage came out and we held court. I did a stand-up drunken routine at Cooper's Hawk while double-fisting wine, while behind me the entire time is a video playing about wine production with the whitest, oldest blonde woman you have ever seen on the TV, and Zan is now screaming, SHELL SHIT FACES QUEEN! <laughs> And I'd love to tell you that the story ended the way I thought it would, with us being banned from Cooper's Hawk. They gave us a hundred dollar gift certificate. <laughs> By the way, uh, are we actually getting money for this shit? Yep, the hat's going around the room right now. Okay, then I'm going to continue that story. Hell yeah. <clears throat> I stood up with I the I need more company. time. I... <clears throat> what would my father... Um... No, I was just going to say, are you channeling your dad? Um, I'll tell you what. I'm going to tell the story and you shout real loud when you're done. I followed Chittabengo to the restroom and I noticed that when you went into the restroom, there was a the stall there. And I thought it would really be an underhanded move for me to kick that door in and do something with the cucumber while that poor man is in this vulnerable position. Oh every, every new line in this story makes you sound more like a sex offender. I just... <laughs> like I took the cucumber yes, in the sir. restroom and yeah, thought, I maybe the... I should kick in the yeah. stall door and do something horrible to that poor man. Well, Please, get to the punchline. Okay, line. I'm getting the punchline. <laughs> I did kick in the door of the stall. Not better. Go back to the exposition. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I went into the restroom where Chittabengo was uh, engaged, and I, I did kick in the door, and um, the uh, the cucumber. I was brandishing the cucumber in my hand, and I, I it. Okay, sh should I tell them what I did with it? You're good. And I just took it and I impaled it on the coat hook, slammed the door and went back. And Chittabengo took a picture. If you guys think I'm making this shit up, but we're going to put it on the screen uh. if, we, if we could, maybe. Possibly. Timing is everything in comedy. It's, <laughs> it's, it's like, so yeah. It might be a good AV crew. We aren't perfect. <laughs> It's okay, I love you Fair guys enough. anyway. They're, because they're I'm just going to see her whine and bitch about the fact my glass is almost empty and nobody's doing anything about it. Fuck you. Motherfucker, do we need to hand, like, hire a, a yes. violinist to follow you around? <laughs> Emprecon does. Fucking said, please, sir, uh, I'd like some more. We had a uh, friend at Nero. He was a very, very tiny gentleman. He was actually half albino. And for the longest time. He was eight time, inches high. It's eight inches high. <laughs> for the longest time, uh, for some reason, we don't even know how this started. When we needed something, because they were helping me in the tavern, someone would yell out, Oh, Cabana Boy! <laughs> and their response was always, Yo, ho, ho, sir! Well, they showed up at LARP one day, they showed up to Nero, they get out of their car, I see my friend, and I yell out, Yo, Cabana Boy! And he goes, Yo, ho, ho, sir! and then points at his father, who gave him a ride to the event. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> thank you, Tom. Guys, thank you so much. You guys keep talking. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's a lot of money. That is. You go. You go. Like, well, I've got Kake over here. Yeah. Fucking making puppy dog guys. You could offer him one of your beers. I could offer him a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> My age, you take it where you can get it, okay? No, I mean, I'll, I'm telling you, Alkali and I took a beach trip. You definitely need to come with us next time. Yes, you do. It was a wonderful beach trip. We went to Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Oh. Okay, continue, but I'll tell you about Rehoboth. All right, we got the photo. Yeah, there you are. What the fuck? That was the cucumber that I impaled on the coat hook and then walked out. As far as I know, it's still there. Exactly how high up was that coat hook? Uh, about eye level. <laughs> the practice cucumber. No! No! For very... T you were saying Rehoboth Beach. Uh, now, does anybody here know what Rehoboth Beach, Delaware is? No. Right. Uh, okay. Along the East Coast, there are what we call gay beach towns. One of them you've definitely heard of, Fire Island, New York. You've heard of Fire Island, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, Fire Island's for the, new, for the regular New York gays in the summer to go and be seen along the beach and party. Then there's Provincetown in Massachusetts. Provincetown is for the rich gays from New York. And that's where they go to party and be seen along the beach. Now, if you're not from New York, but say from Philadelphia or DC or Baltimore, you go to Rehoboth Beach in the summer, which is the wonderful gay resort town of the Northeast in Delaware, Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. So, for my anniversary, my spouse said, we're going to go to a gay beach. And I said, Provincetown. And my spouse said, oh, honey, we are not Provincetown rich gay. <laughs> um, said, okay, where? Rehoboth Beach. Oh, are we going in like you? No, honey, we, we're not Rehoboth in the summer rich gays either. <laughs> and I said, well, what type of rich gay are they? They said, actually, we're, we're not Rehoboth Beach rich gay, period. We are Bethany Beach 15 minutes outside of Rehoboth Beach in February, wealthy. <laughs> so I Also known as poor. <laughs> so naturally, I invited, I invited Alkali and Sandy to come along with us. Thank you. And the first night there, we decided we were going to go into Rehoboth Beach to a lovely little bar called Freddy's Purple Parrot, yep. where they were having a drag show. Now... It is 15 minutes from Bethany Beach to Rehoboth Beach, and you have to go over a causeway and an island that is just the Delaware Seashore State Park. That's all it is. Sand dunes on one side, swampland on the other for about 10 silent minutes, then you're in Rehoboth Beach. We get there, but to get there, we had to call an Uber because none of us were going to drive. Now, our Uber driver on the way there was a wonderful man named Kahim. Was that his name? Uh, Kahim. No, 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 no. That was Rakish. Rakish, thank Rikish. you. Rakish. Rakish. And Rakish picks us up. We get in there. Zandy's wearing their nicest skirt. My spouse is in the just rainbow everything, and Alkali and I are talking about dicks. <laughs> and Rakish, as we're leaving Bethany Beach, they have a giant statue. It is the head of a man with an eagle on top. I am assuming it is a, a native statue. Uh, however, have you all ever heard of Vermin Supreme? <laughs> sort of looked like Vermin Supreme. Really but like we are... We are sitting at the red light directly across from the statue, and Rakish turns around and says, You all are talking about penises, and I am just trying not to stare at that statue. <laughs> and that's when we decided we liked Rakish. <laughs> so for the next 15 minutes, we had a wonderful conversation with Rakish. We got to the Purple Parrot. Rakish is like, The drag show is wonderful. There's another place around the corner if you want. Call later when you need to go home. We're like, okay, cool. Rakesh, so we go in and we start drinking at the Purple Pair. First, tiny bar. Very. The drag queens wandered around doing their routines. One, and they were very energetic. Oh, yeah. Very, to the point that one of them at our table, to our table, took our dollars and went, this is fucking exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> totally unprompted. Just looked us in the eye. This is exhausting. <laughs> I stepped outside to have a cigarette. I walked back in. Now, we were seated at a long table. At one end was Alkali Zanny, me and my spouse. At the other end, though, we had a visitor, an older gentleman, sitting at the end of the table with his cell phone. I walk in. I sit down. I look at Alkali. I go, who is that? And Alkali says, well, they just came up, asked if they could sit there. And I go, okay, that's, that's cool. You know, it's a bar. All right. We're sitting there. The gentleman turns looks at us and then says, my sister-in-law's father-in-law died today. 
Hell of an icebreaker. <laughs> yeah. It gets even more intriguing if you think about what he said. My sister-in-law's father-in-law died today. His sister-in-law's father-in-law is most likely his dad. Yeah, isn't that... Uh, how bad does your relationship with your father need to be that that's how you refer to him? <laughs> Number two, if your relationship with your dad is that bad, I don't think you're that broken up about it. But credit for the icebreaker, so I go, I'm going to go down there. I'm going to talk to this guy. Right? Now, I will say my decision was driven by some other factors, such as from the end of the table, All we can watch hail it. All hail the wine. We, All we hail, hail the, wine. the wine. We could watch him pick up his cell phone and do this, very obviously scrolling through Grindr. No, no, it was more than obvious he was scrolling through Grindr because he didn't turn off his alerts. Uh, and if you've ever wanted to be amused, go to a gay bar and let your sound play the Grindr noise because all you were seeing the entire night at the bar is boom and half the bar. Huh? Oh. <laughs> so I go down and I'm talking to him. We discover a lot about him. We, uh, his name is Anton. He's a very nice gentleman, older gentleman named Anton. He's there for the weekend. Uh, he he was overweight, but got sick and lost a lot of weight. Lost, I think he said, 200 pounds. Whoa! Uh, which explains the grinder, because if I lost 200 pounds, I am showing everyone my dick. Yeah. Yes. Just out where, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry! <laughs> we learn how much meat he can eat before he gets violently ill. This much. That was, that was an example. He orders us a drink at one point. And now, I should describe the drinks at this bar, because you see me right now drinking Montucky cold snack and whiskey, and you would think that that would be something that we were drinking at that bar, but you did not see the bar specialty menu, which included something called the Flashing Pink Pussy, um, which I don't know what the fuck was in it, but it had a light-up ice cube. So we just kept drinking those. Anton orders us drinks. Uh, we're talking, we're having a great great time we're having a great great time and Anton looks at his phone and goes oh well I guess I need to leave and we go okay Anton have a good night now before he did that though he said probably the best part because he's getting progressively drunker and at one point he goes I've got three kids you know, I, my name's Anton, I'm from New Jersey, I'm divorced. I've got three kids, but none of them know I'm gay. And I'm thinking, oh God, that's, like, that's, that's, a, that, I know a lot of older guys who are in the closet, that's, that's somewhat depressing, but, you know, I, I guess I get it, different generation. Then he looks me dead in the eyes and goes, don't tell them. <laughs> well, Anton from New Jersey, I don't know what made you assume I know your children, but... <laughs> I guarantee you, if I know them, you're not the only one keeping secrets. <laughs> well, I don't know. Don't worry about it. You don't need to worry about that. We would never do that. I say to the room full of furries, I'm telling about my encounter with Anton in the gay bar in Rehoboth Beach. Speaking of which, he's like afterwards, I said, oh, no, we can't tell this on stage. We promised Anton. And Uncle I says, no, we promised him not to tell his kids. I said, yeah. But there are hundreds of people that hear us do this shit, and there's a not bad chance that his kids may be in the audience. One day. So if your dad is a contractor from New Jersey named Anton, who can only eat this much meat, and used to be overweight, maybe maybe call him, have a conversation. Thanksgiving is going to be interesting this call year. Call him, give him a big hug, and say, we still love you. Now, Anton leaves. He walks out. I go back to the other end of the table. I am telling everybody everything I've learned about Anton. And Alkali looks down and goes, he left his phone. Huh? You didn't uh, call? I go, oh, no. Anton's left his phone, and the grinder notifications are coming in. Oh, frequently at this point, I have to Antoine help. got a hook. I, I have to help Anton get laid. <laughs> So I grab his phone, run out the door of this bar. Now, this bar is on a side street, and about maybe 40 feet away from the door, there is an alleyway. And then there's the corner. And I run out, and it's about midnight. And I look up into the night sky, because there is no Anton, and I yell into the night. Anton! 
John! <laughs> Just full on cat on a hot timber. Stella! In the middle of the fucking road, falling to my knees in the middle of the road, repeatedly screaming to the heavens. At this point, and John! I need no. to let you know that this gay bar did not hire a good construction crew. Because this gay bar, you could hear everything from outside. And after, after the event that we had already seen, it was karaoke night. Oh, yeah. So you've got somebody up front. It's raining men. And time! Hallelujah. Now they're on their knees. And time! We're leaving the bar to go join them. Now it's a duet and stupid. And I got the phone in the air. Twink cock shown to God. And You forgot your phone. And here he comes out of the goddamn alley. Oh, God. And this was not a short amount of time. I had been out in the street for a while at this point. Like, people were getting concerned. Other bars were empty. And he walks over, gives me a hug, goes, Thank you. Takes his phone and walks the fuck off into the night. <laughs> so the next day, we're driving around the beach. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe that alley leads to the parking lot or something. So we drive by and I look down. It's a dead end fucking alley. It only goes like four feet. And nobody else came out of that goddamn alley. I watched. What the fuck was Anton doing in there? <laughs> Anyways, we get drunk. We decide it's time to leave. We call an Uber. We are hoping to get Rakesh. We did not get Rakesh. We got Dave. 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 Dave showed up. We piled into Dave's car. Dave seemed very pleasant at the beginning. He said, you having a good night? We went, yeah. And Dave started the car, went about 10 feet. Now we're all very, very drunk, but even very, very drunk, I go into dad mode and I say, does everyone have their phones? Because we don't want an Anton situation. <laughs> and Zanny goes, I don't know, and starts patting. Zanny's wearing a skirt. <laughs> So I think it'd be rather obvious if they forgot their fucking phone, which they did, by the way. And we are just like, here's the red light right here. Here's the bar right here. We are sitting at the red light. I go, oh, hey, uh, can we just, you know, hold on a second. Our friend needs to go get their phone. And Dave thought about it. Like the light turned green and Dave started going. Dave was considering being like, that is your fucking problem, not mine. I don't know what the fuck happened to Dave in his childhood, but that question, like, gave him a flashback. He was not happy with us the rest of the goddamn night. He was a different person. <laughs> we circled back around. Zanny went in, got their phone, got back in the car. And Dave is driving us back to our beach house, which I will remind you at this point in time is on the other side of a bridge across an island with just dunes and swampland in pitch black for 10 minutes. We're going across the bridge and Dave is slowing the fucking car down. <laughs> oh God, we're gonna die. <laughs> like the last person to see us alive is gonna be the guy who was hooking up in the alley. This is how I go. We did get back. We got out of the car. And we're like, thank you, Dave. He's like, mm, driving away. And Alkali's like, I'm going to give him a tip because he didn't just kill us in the swamps. <laughs> I was impressed. <laughs> That's all you got to do? Just not kill somebody? I mean, basically, at this point. I, I just like to imagine that Rakesh went home that night and told his family about the group of people he picked up who were just so happy and going out to have a wonderful time. And Dave went back home and looked at his dad and said, Jesus Christ, Anton, you wouldn't believe these queers I picked up today. Uh, yeah. Now you mentioned, as soon as you said Rehoboth, I, I okay, I said, mm, because my late father, Anton Conway, um, <laughs> no, I made that shit up. He used to go to Rehoboth Beach every single day. He really? Did. Yeah, back in the 50s. 
Because back in the 50s, Rehoboth Beach was a desolate stretch of wilderness. My father was in charge of an artillery regiment. They used to do target practice shooting artillery into Delaware Bay from Rehoboth. If you want to go to Rehoboth Beach, that entire beach offshore is littered with live ordnance, just so you know. I, I, I have two things. Number one, uh, the gay beach in Rehoboth is called Poodle Beach. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Um, and it's been there since the 20s. Number two, the fire control towers from the artillery regiment yep. are still along the beach. Really? Yeah. So you could, actually, my dad probably sat in one of those. Probably. Dude, yeah, that's really Along cool. with Anton. That's not. Okay. <laughs> now, our best part was when we're, dry, when we're walking through Bethany Beach, they had a bunch of signs, as one does, telling you things you can and cannot do on the beach. It's like no dogs on the beach during this season. Do not chew on the artillery shells if you find them. You know, uh, <laughs> do not dig deep holes and leave them <laughs> unfilled, which was rather fucking specific because they didn't say what you needed to fill them with. <laughs> you know, Anton. respect our beaches. Respect our beaches. I, I found the signs amusing because with me, I had a Sharpie. And uh, I was a little annoyed from the night before. So if you go to Rehoboth Beach now, you're going to see those exact same signs with a little ad. Please respect our beach, Dave. <laughs> if you dig a hole, fill it in, Dave. No illicit substances on the beach anymore, Dave. <laughs> I hope he drives through there more. Uh, you know what? I just want to go back. Maybe Dave was pissed off because Dave was not in the Trump truck with me. You leave the Trump truck out of this. Excuse me. No, I'm suddenly very curious. You really shouldn't Actually, be. what? Okay. AV guys, how much time do we have left? Two minutes. Talk fast. Are we done? I hate you so much. Are we done? Uh, well, we, uh, we've got... We need more money. 30 seconds. What? 30 seconds. Good, give us your fucking money right now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's how you do it, right? There you go. Oh, yeah, put, put, put money in the hat or... Or... Yes, um... I, 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 I lost my mojo. Put money in the hat or... Or... All right. Or else. Or else. Thank you. So, we had got back that night, night from the gay bar. We were all pretty drunk. It was their anniversary. QM and Boozy were celebrating their anniversary, and I got to see a rock-solid relationship in action because QM was gone. QM got into the house, laid down on the couch, and immediately fell asleep. And this gentleman over here said, hey, every uh, 10 minutes, say their name and let me know if they don't respond. I'm like, oh, okay, this is a smart thing to do. And we do that. And we sat there, and we watched some TV, and we kept talking to QM. And then all of a sudden, QM did not respond. Ooh. We said their name uh, again, and QM did not respond. And we're about to get up to check on QM, and Boozy goes, don't worry, I got this. Takes off their sock, <laughs> balls it up, and gently tosses it to land right in front of QM's face. <laughs> and QM laid there for another few moments, and then, what the fuck? And they go, they're fine. <laughs> So now they have gone to bed. They left the room. They went upstairs. This is a two-story house. Me and Zan stayed downstairs, watched another stand-up comedian. And while we're sitting there, we say to each other, I, I hope they're okay, because you could hear things through the house. And we could hear them talking very heatedly. Heatedly? And heatedly. And all of a sudden, as Zan says, should we go check on them? We hear from upstairs. BECAUSE YOU WILL DIE! <laughs> and Zan looks at me, and I look at them, and then we hear uproarious laughter like, okay, they're either fine or one of them already murdered the other. Not our problem. The place we rented did not provide linens. You had to bring your own linens. 
So we brought our own lemons, but we didn't make the bed before going to the bar because we, we had thought we'll do it when we get back. Oh, no. <laughs> so my spouse goes upstairs, draws a bath. Now, if you have not seen my spouse, they, they are a small person. They are tiny. They're eight inches high. <laughs> really? It's like so, a sprite. They ran a bath and then lounged in the tub to where their, only their nose and lips were above the water. It's actually the sink. <laughs> so I walk in and I go, honey, you, you need to get out of the tub. You can't, you can't do that. The, are the sheets on the bed? No, the, the sheets aren't on the bed yet. I'll put the sheets on the bed. I'm not getting out of the tub till the sheets are on the bed. Okay, but I can't go put the sheets on the bed while you're in the tub. No, you will put the sheets on the bed first. I, honey, you are in the tub almost submerged. I cannot leave you alone in here while this drunk to go put the sheets on the bed. I don't know why you just won't go put the sheets on the bed. Because you will die! <laughs> Long pause. We both break down laughing. <laughs> and then I help them out of the tub and put them on the bed, which I did not put the fucking sheets on. So just to be clear. And then the next morning, they both come walking downstairs, the hangover in full swing. Boozy looked at me and said, how'd you sleep? And I said, because you will die. <laughs> to which now I can hear QM laughing their ass off upstairs. So I had a good day. I want to share before we go. Yeah, yeah. One of the greatest things I ever heard in my entire life. And I've heard a lot of great things. Um, came from QM. And I know it had to be QM because it certainly wasn't this asshole. I am not that deep. No, no. I was, I, I was visiting their house and before I went to sleep with Boozy's hooker that night we, that's another story explain that that's story that's another now. story no, we're out of time before I went to sleep with the hooker that night we were we were saying our good nights and we were just sitting at the table and this guy was like throwing up on himself and QM was the one that came up with this quote remember this quote if you remember nothing else you can report this everywhere QM said, <clears throat> Furry fandom is the community that we never realized we had been looking for all of our lives. That says it all. Cheers. That was the longest damn 30 seconds I have ever seen. Should have turned our mics off. You couldn't. Now I will tell you about the hooker. God damn it, no. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, this has been a comedy better when I've had a few. Give it for Uncle Kage! You can find Uncle Kage on YouTube, streaming once a month for Kage's wine stream. Like give, next it week. The, give it up for the Boozy Badger! And give it up especially for the amazing, the incalculable, the incalculable, the incontinent, Alkali Bismuth. Anyway, in this room in 25 minutes. Thank you very much and good night. I go get these bottles, we go out, 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 Silver Gato Man, he bought me a coffee. Silver Gato Man, here is the song for thee. He likes to video all the panels at the cons. You should go and watch them, whether they are short or long. Silver Gato Man, you video that's not a jibe. All of you go to his YouTube channel and like and subscribe.